I said, at the moment. So if someone watches this interview and immediately goes, you know what, that is the greatest thing on earth. I have to come and see it. Um, one, so they're welcome to come in, grab a book off the shelf, yep. sit down and read. Um, now, within the, the context of the space, because we are getting a sort of narrow view of what's going on, um, I'll have a shot of this. But over there, um, 50 feet, if that, um, it's like a big uh, kitchen. Uh, now, is that open access? Yep. yep. So if I wanted to go make a coffee, I can go brew a coffee, enjoy my drink, read my comics, chill out. Yeah, I suppose you wouldn't be able to brew a coffee, but there's always like a canteen of coffee ready to be pulled from and poured from, and people are always having tea and other stuff here, and I go through way too much coffee every <laughs> time I'm here. By the end, my hand's just like, mm. <laughs> a little bit more shaky than at the beginning of the day, that's for sure. That's awesome. It's fun. I bet, yeah, I was going to say, you're sitting here... Now, like you said, you, you more or less, you yourself, when you're here, you'll sit and you'll draw. Um, are you sort of dedicating this time to specifically for the library? Is it your own personal pursuits? Is it a blend of both? Well, Sundays, it's always going to be different. So when people are here and I'm not the only one in the library, I will always pay attention to them if they're willing to, and I'll start giving them suggestions or start drawing with them. If I'm the only one here, I'll typically do my daily panel for the day, get that out of the way, and then I'll start reading books. Perfect. And just enjoying enjoying the collection because there's so many books that have been on my to-read list or to-buy list that I never thought I'd be able to. Like Akira, it's this awesome six-volume yes. vol series, and oh. each of those books probably cost $30, $40. So in order to buy all of them, it would cost like $200. Yeah. And I've always wanted to read them, and they surf somebody donated the whole collection recently, and it just was such wow. such a joy for me to finally be able to to read this this story. And there's so many books like that now here that have just been like, I've always wanted to read this, but I don't want to drop fifty dollars on it. And yep. now now they're here, and I get to get to read them. So the list is constantly growing, and that's that's what I do on Sundays when I'm here. For sure, and and for uh, anyone, frankly, my age just about 30 uh, or older. Akira, this is the actual book for the movie, for the anime. Uh, and anyone who hasn't read Akira yet, come and, come and read it. It's a great series. I was so pleased with it. I love the movie and the, the books are just a, a whole other extension of it or previous extension. I don't know if that's a, if there's a word for that. But. It's a part of it. It's a part of it, yeah, exactly. Now, a, a part of your work, so we've got Don't Fret here on the table. Um, what other works do you have? Do you have any that are in the library here? Well, so just just a little history of my comic practices. I was doing web comics in high school. That's when I started to draw comics, was just put them online, put them on the web. And then I learned about zine culture and self-publishing and heard that people are doing this in the world. So I started self-publishing when I was, I think, 16. Wow. Uh, making little zines up north in Sudbury. I was making these zines called Basin. They were just like really bad, like sketchbook things that barely had comics. It was mostly just drawings and little, maybe one off. And okay. Maybe there were like two pages of comics work in there. But I always wanted to do more with comics. And then, uh, and then I said, can move to Toronto, started to do a whole bunch of other short, short, like one off, one page, three page stories. The story that I did before Don't Fret is like a 16-page fret story. That kind of led into me doing my daily panels and my Don't Fret stuff. And then as soon as I finished doing that, I started to make short 10-panel Sabrini comics before embarking on another full-length story. Yeah. So I was making these little 10-page zines or 10-page comics that, I was, that I'm publishing into scrolls. So these are my current projects that I've been working on. Uh, and these are just short, there's three stories in here and each story's 10 panels long. And they're all comedy, it's all, it's all silly stuff uh, that I think is funny. Like this, this story that is being scrolled through right now is about Sabrina at a party and everyone's peer pressuring her to take drugs and MDMA and stuff. And, then she turns all of their drugs into laxatives, and then they all have to line up and use the washroom. And she she gets to laugh at everyone's expense after they're kind of making fun of her for not not doing what they think is cool or normal or whatever. Yeah, 
So that's this is that's this is how I'm printing right now, and the Sabrini story I'm currently working on. When it's done, I'm hoping to make like a 12-inch wide scroll with four panels, similarly how I did this, but in a scroll form that's just wow. massive. But I don't think I don't know what's gonna happen with that. That's like a year down the line, so we'll we'll face that hurdle when it when it. Approaches. For sure. So I, I did want to ask. So don't fret. You originally did as one post a day Instagram, mm -hmm. and I think uh, yeah, you started. I think it was April 2016, and you finished. I believe it was 20. 2019, yeah. It was like a week or two before TCAF, I finished writing the story and then spent two weeks making the books. And wow. then I launched it at TCAF. And then I started working on Sabrini. So <laughs> you've gone from social media, Instagram, you've now bound your own books, 50 of them, uh, of which this is the last copy. So if you do want to read Don't Fret, a physical form, you must come here. Um, and by the way, you can read it for free. Just come in, join, sit down, enjoy. $5 donation recommended. You can be a member of the library. Now, the medium of comics is always a little abstract, right? Inherently, it's you've got the written story, the drawn story, and then sometimes narration within character dialogue. Um, so it can be a little abstract. The art you can use, the paneling work, you can play with a lot. Mm -hmm. But here we've gone from like a fairly traditional medium to a scroll. How did you make the leap from, like I would say, a traditional book laid out, you know, I guess sideways yeah. from normal, but more or less a traditional book to a scroll. So it goes back to Instagram and the <laughs> idea of how we view media now and how we gather information is mm -hmm. going back to scrolls. And I think we use the word scroll probably more now than we have in throughout history, but in a connotation that isn't uh, talking about a, a noun. Scroll. It's yeah. more so we use it as a as a action word rather than a physical word huh. and so I really wanted to to make it feel exactly like Instagram and not to mention it's a witch story and I find scrolls just have this old timey thing and it feels a little bit more magical and, yeah. and I just loved the idea of like seeing scrolls I play a lot of Dungeons and Dragons and scrolls are a part yes. of D&D &D, and it's like why why are there no scrolls in the world why why is this suddenly just not a thing anymore. And so I started to do this and I just, once again, like made some tests, did a, did a couple tests and then started making these. And it's like 124 by 36 piece of paper, which I've cut into, I think they're four inch strips. And then I sew them uh, using a sewing machine and I just sew the paper together. So eventually they'll be able to be as long as I want. Just, it's, it's gonna amount. cost a lot. To, to print these things because it's all color and I was gonna yeah, say so that's so the thing. you have them printed on that strip and then sew the pieces together right mm -hmm. now. Wow. That is that's extremely unique. Like Yeah. It's like so much fun. I was looking into like how to print scrolls just on a massive long sheet of paper so I don't have to sew it and I don't I just still haven't found a place to do that. I just get these printed on Spadina at a local print shop. So Nice. Yeah. Now, actually, to speak about that, so you said it's to a local print shop. Um, a lot of the the non major publishers, so the the stuff that's here that isn't Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, um, or from things like Viz Media mm -hmm. or other major production companies, who would have made Akira or might do Naruto books or Hellboy or mm -hmm. Superman. Um, what other kind of content do you have, and, and how much of the stuff here is local. There's a lot of local books here. Uh, I think that spinning rack that is out of camera shot are all Toronto local, maybe all Canada local cartoonists. Uh, so we have a pretty decent collection of zines from local cartoonists. Um, and then there are lots of published artists that are local cartoonists. Um, we were lucky enough to receive a grant from uh, the Toronto Arts Council in 2019 to house uh, cartoonists in residence. Oh. So we managed to acquire this grant and then pay five cartoonists a decent chunk of money to uh, set up a, a bookshelf for us and do a, a discussion on whatever subject they want. So we've had it from a, a webcomics uh, seminar just talking about if you want to get into webcomics, this is how you do it. Um, that was by Jay Pollock. Uh, the the one before that was by Eric Kosciuk-Williams. 
who these are both Toronto creators, and their discussion was about queer comics history, and he just like broke down everything he knew about queer comics and the history of it. Um, yeah, and then the, there was a character creation workshop, that, uh, and it just was such a, a fortunate thing that we were able to provide a, a space for our local cartoonists to to host their event and pay them. Which is, that's fabulous. It was super, super great. So there's another one coming up that we, we yes. managed to grab. I don't know how much I can say about that right now, so I'm going to keep it on the down low. I don't think we've announced it yet, but there is more events coming up in the Comics Library in 2020. It's very soon. I'm sure you'll hear about it if you follow us online. For sure. And for following you online, uh, we'll make sure that uh, down in the links below we'll have Instagram, the website, Facebook, wherever someone can find you guys, I will make sure that we have it. Um, how frequently are you doing events like that? Or having panels or artist people here? So we're trying to do monthly events. I think in 2019 it was like a bi-monthly. Oh, we'll so every other month. Every other month, yeah. And so the, the drawing club's every week. That's like goes without say, but then we're still trying to do more and more. Um, it's just a matter of organization and things yeah. like that. Perfect. So the goal though would be probably once a month. Like yeah, once a month would be, okay. would be great. So we'll we'll see. I know, like I'm hinting at something, and I don't want to say too much, but that yeah, will don't be get like, yourself uh, in trouble. Now. That will be an every other month thing for sure, and then maybe we'll figure something out to supplement the months in between. For sure, that's fabulous. And for people out there who are interested in these kind of events, um, you can go right to the website, which is uh, CanadaComicsOL.com. Uh, CanadaComicsOL.org. Dot org, uh, and from right from there you can easily access the calendar, uh, which I believe is it's represented as a total month, correct? Yep. And it'll show the hours and sort of the events that are going on. And that way, people know when they can come here, hang out, draw with you on a Sunday, or if there's an event going on, they can come check it out. Yeah, I should mention our our normal hours is not just Sundays. We're open Wednesday to Sunday, so we're just closed Mondays and Tuesdays. Um, currently, we're open eleven to six. But we're looking to have later hours uh, in the springtime because we know that a lot of people work during the day and just can't make it out to the library. So we're hoping if we can get extended hours that um, more people will come in the evening time. But right now it's 11 to 6, Wednesday to Sunday. Perfect. Uh, and when it comes to donating to the library, um, as you mentioned earlier, there's a, a wish list on the website which contains sort of every book that you're after. Mm -hmm. um, if someone out there has one of these books or is just willing to go purchase it, what would be the best way to get it to you? To bring it here, that would be the, the easiest way. If you're if you're living in Toronto, just bring it directly here. And if not, there's a website online or there's a, a physical address online that you can mail the uh, the work to. Perfect. If you're not in the city. Yeah. Awesome. Is there anything that you would like to tell people? Well. I, I just would love to see more people coming in and reading these books. I find the comics medium to be one of the most pure forms of storytelling that an individual can do. I am a fan of so many forms of media and storytelling, but in order for one person to make a feature-length film, it's a very next to impossible task just because of how many people go into making these things. Heck, even like a small production, I don't, no, I shouldn't say small, even a production like on a scale like this, it requires two people. It, yeah. It, it cannot just be done by one person. And comics is a way to tell a story effectively. Just, I just love it. And, and some of the stories on these shelves are so unique and just so beautiful and heart touching and told from so many perspectives. And the more perspectives you can gain in life, the uh, more wise you will become. So that's my pitch to please come to the library. I love this place. I want to see it around forever, and I, I hope you do too. Perfect. Well, I absolutely think, I know I'll be coming back, if not as a reader, to do more discussions and hopefully get involved at the library. Uh, if you're out there watching, absolutely come on down. Uh, it's just off Dundas Street. Very easy to find. Uh, I'll make sure that I have a Google Maps in the link below for you. Um, Again, to be a member, $5 donation or more if you can give, you'll pay it forward. And of course, they willingly, you guys will accept donations, especially if it's on your wish list. Um, so, Jordan, thank you very much for taking the time to talk with us. I appreciate so much that you've come in to, uh, 
and host this discussion. Thank you. Well, thank you for being here. Uh, and guys, please do stop by the library uh, anytime you can.